Hey guys, well, this is my first video I am doing for this channel. Um, I have an Instagram page um, where people have suggested I go to YouTube and I show kind of my restoration process on some of the guns I have. I started doing this about three or so months ago and just to kind of explain it to you, what, I'm, what I do is um, I go online and I find you know, old beat up surplus guns that, you know, don't hold too much value or they're not too rare. And I attempt to bring them back to their original condition as best as I can. Um, and there's a lot of people that will say, you know, you shouldn't really do this. This, you know, it destroys the value of the guns, all that. And while I agree, yes, that's for the most case, a lot of guns that you do not want to do that for. I mean, if we're taking an example, like a Luger, you don't want to, if you have an old beat up uh, worn down Luger, you don't want to go and restore that, then you lose all your value. But if you take a gun, um, you know, that's, you know, not too rare, there's, you know, millions of them, and, you know, um, and you bring them back to their original condition as best as you can, you know, there is some more value, I think, in that, and I've actually um, proven that theory. I've dealt a lot of my guns on Gunbroker. Um, for example, I bought a Turkish Mauser um, back a few months ago, I think I bought it for about $300. I completely restored it, reblued, all of that, and I think I ended up selling it for about 600, 625. But um, there's a lot of guns I'm trying to do that with, just that aren't you know too expensive. Um, you know, Carcanos, um, and the one example we're going to do today is one I got at Gun Broker. It's a VZ33-12. It is an El Salvador contract gun. It was, it was completely just disgusting and worn down um and i there i didn't see that it would hold too much value in the way it is versus if i were just going to completely restore it there's not many of these that are found to be in really really good condition so i do believe there would be a demand for something like that but either way i do just enjoy the process and seeing the way these guns come back to life you know especially guns that you don't really see that are in immaculate condition so this will be an interesting piece i haven't seen one that's you know just looks like it's brand new so um this is also just fun for me to do and fun to see come to life and um yeah so um i didn't get to record the first parts of this this is literally me just uh taking over i'm about you know probably 70 percent there but just kind of talk through like what i've done all that i'm uh, sorry this place is just a little bit of a mess i just moved in here, I got all my stuff in the garage, but I just kind of want to show you where we're sitting. Um, so yeah, this is a VZ 33-12. It was made in Czechoslovakia, 1937, and it was contracted for El Salvador. So being that it was El Salvador, the gun, you can imagine how filthy it was. I will show you probably, I'll edit in, in right now. You can see how it looked before. Just the stock was just almost just completely black. The, there was a lot of surface rust. There is some pitting on this. Um, it was just nasty. I mean, but still, nevertheless, a good looking gun. And I knew it would have the potential to come out to be a, a really, really good looker. So anyways, I'll just kind of show you where everything sits right now. So I guess I'll start with this. I haven't um, blued or anything, but as you can see, this is the bolt. Um, it was originally blued it had a lot of surface rust and i just sanded it down i do not i mean originally these things were blued but i am going to keep it in this shiny metal finish um the process for that i use a bunch of different sandpapers and there's a lot of people that are going to go on here and say oh you don't want to do that there's a whole another better process but for me personally these guns i found that sanding works the best what i do is you know obviously you strip the bolt um, I start with 120 grit sandpaper, then 220, 400, 800, 1000, then 2000 to give that final shiny finish. Um, steel wool it, and then I go over to, do I have it over here? Uh, I guess I put it away, but um, Birchwood Casey makes this uh, blue and rust remover, and it works good for deeper stuff in the pittings that you can't really get. I don't know if you can see that too well in the picture, but there is a little bit of pitting in here and there was some rust in there and that blue and rust remover really helps to get that, um, 
get that final stuff kind of out of there. I mean, it doesn't completely remove it, but it, it helps. And then I kind of go back and there, it leaves a little bit of a film on there. So I go back with the 2000 and then steel wool again. And this is what it finished with. And I'm pretty happy with it. So um, that's the bolt. I don't have the stock over here with me, but I do have uh, the upper hand guard. Um, yeah, as I said, this thing was like completely black. And what I did for the stock was actually I'll throw pictures up here so you can see what the stock looked like before and what it looks like now. But um, I completely, well, I start by trying to degrease it the best I can. And then I use uh, some of this citrus strip stripper. Um, I leave it on there for about mm, two, three hours. And then obviously you wipe it all away. I take um, kind of a blade scraper, scrape off the excess. And then I go and um, uh, degrease it again, best I can. Um, and then I go over to the sanding process. Um, I think I start with 120 and 220 and then 400 and then steel wool it. And then if the finish for this one, it wasn't good enough, I use the stripper again and then repeated the process. And then I just mixed with, um, um, I forget what the, the color I ended up doing. I think it was a little bit of walnut and then um, gun stock finish um, because the stock was already kind of dark, but as you can see, it, this came out really good. I'll, I'll show you uh, more pictures up here what the actual stock looks like, but uh, anyway, so what I'm gonna be working on today, there's two things, but I'll show you kind of the other parts that I've worked on. Oh, that's already finished, but here is the lower. Already blued that. We'll go over that process here in a bit, but and that, the butt plate, um, part of the rear sight. Sling swivels. I guess that's for the bayonet. The actual rear sight itself. Uh, sling swivel, another one. Part that holds the upper handguards together and the stock. Another part of the sling swivel. And the uh, bolt takedown lever, I guess is what you call it. So those are the parts. I usually like to start with the smaller parts. I don't know, just kind of get a taste of how things come out. Um, and then I kind of just leave the barrel and the receiver for last. Um, oh yeah, and then obviously the uh, trigger itself. Um, so I guess we'll start with the smaller parts today, but... Um, I didn't do the, I guess, what is this, the sear. I just sanded it down because I think these originally just come in this kind of shiny metal finish. So um, I've done other Mausers where I blued this and it really didn't come out too well. So I'm just gonna leave that as is. But yeah, today, I mean, we're gonna do two things. I'm gonna show you, um, we're gonna do the screws. I've already sanded these down. Uh, kind of same process I said before with the sanding. The, 120, 220, 400, 800, 1,000, 2,000. Um, these came out pretty well, so I am not gonna use the blue and rust remover. I'm just gonna go straight to bluing. So, put all this away, and then I'll show you the receiver and the barrel. And once again, I've had people say that, you know, you don't wanna use sandpaper because, you know, you'll um, you know, you'll possibly remove some of the markings on there. And I do agree to that to a certain extent, but this is the best, um, uh, process I've actually found that I can actually remove all of the, um, bluing and excess, um, old finish that was on there. So, yeah, so here is the barrel and the receiver. I just started with the receiver. 
Um, as you can see, there's still a good amount of pitting on here, but thankfully the stock covers most of that up. So same process again uh, with the sandpaper. I won't repeat it again, but I'll leave it in the comments if you actually want to see, or the description if you want to um, remember how I actually do this. So uh, yeah, just started with the receiver. I do do a few parts of the inside, but you know, it's not highly recommended. I'm gonna go back in here and actually polish it up. Um, I forget what the stuff I use is. That's really good for the bore polish, but uh, yeah, and the barrel came out pretty good. The parts where the stock actually covers the barrel are much better, but then you have this part, which it's not as good, but, um, and then the front sight, and I'm going to have to figure out how to fix this, but the front sight is very, very wobbly. I think the recess that holds that pin in place might be, um, enlarged somehow, so I don't know what my fix to this is going to be, but I'm going to try and take it apart and see. Um, so we're going to save this for last. Now there's some people, I mean, obviously the, on the instructions for this, you know, perma blue, it says, you know, don't leave it on there for more than a minute. Um, I've actually found that for me, at least there is really no downside to leaving it on more than a minute, but I do like to do everything in chunks. So for this, we're just going to start with the receiver. I'm going to try and tape this up the best I can, but I'm sure there's going to be some bluing that seeps in here a little bit but we'll start with the receiver and i don't know i don't know if anyone else has encountered this but for me at least the things that i like to do so there's two types of bluing that we got here there's the super blue and the perma blue there's other bluings out there and that people you know say that are better than others but i've had pretty good luck with these um oh yeah and just um uh, um just to recap, I am going to be switching over from cold blowing to, to rust blowing. I got to do a little bit more research on that, but then the guns that I have coming up in the later videos um, are going to be done with rust blowing. I haven't done those yet, so y'all will be on the ride with me for that one. That'll be a new experience for me, but the reason is obviously, I mean, I'm sure y'all know this too, that, you know, cold blowing in itself is not... Um, Longevity reasons it doesn't hold as good as say something like rust blowing like these will wear more over time, but uh, the guns that I have cold blued they have um, You know held their own they've done all right I don't really a lot of these guns that I restore. I don't really plan to shoot them too much anyways um, I keep them you know in my safe where they're locked up. They're not going to be banging around and um, You know be carried around in cases that much so I don't expect the um the bluing to wear off anytime soon for at least but um rust bluing though or yeah rust bluing uh you do get a darker color than uh cold bluing so i do like that as well and obviously that it it holds longer sorry about that there's someone at the door anyways what was i saying i think i was talking about <laughs> rust bluing or something um yeah, so just the rust bluing, the color is darker than cold bluing, um, and then it supposedly lasts longer. Um, so I'm gonna be doing that for my future guns coming up. Um, but yeah, so the cold bluing process on its own. So the two that we have here, there's the super blue birchwood, super blue, and then the birchwood perma blue. Um, so I really haven't done that much research on it. The super blue, um, you know, it's supposed to give uh, these metals like a, a deeper blue than the, the perma blue. Um, this I've found, it doesn't, it's weird. I mean, I think it works with certain metals and some, it, it, it really doesn't. But this is, it doesn't get it as dark as the perma blue. But I found that it can get more of the surface first than the perma blue like the perma blue doesn't spread as easily as a super blue so i mean this is just the process i found that works best and i might be doing this all wrong but the process i found is well at least for the receiver and barrels at least i do about eight i guess you call them coats i don't know what you call them eight super blues and then four 
perma blues and the super blues kind of get everything somewhat blued and then the perma blue kind of gives it that oops kind of gives it that final darker color now i really haven't tried just doing perma blue on its own i've done it before where i've done perma blue first then super blue but the color comes out super weird and spotchy so the super blue kind of gives it that initial darkness and then the perma blue i found kind of gives it that final dark color but um that's for the receiver and the barrel i'm going to do that for the little parts on its own like the blower and the trigger guard um i guess that's what you call this um i just did i think i did three or four coats of the super blue and then two or three of the perma blue and that came out dark enough um the smaller parts like this um sling swivel bracket i know i forget what you call it i think i only did two or three of the super blue and then two of the perma blue and the, the smaller parts I, it just doesn't require as much i've found i don't know so the screws that we're going to be doing uh, we're probably only going to be doing like two super blues and then two perma blues and then the barrel and the receiver i'm gonna see how eight of the super blues work and then four of the perma blues um, and then we're going to go from there. So, um, once we get in there, I'll kind of discuss the process, but, um, you know, obviously one of the most important things is degreasing. You got to degrease the whole gun. I mean, that's very important for the, the bluing solution to evenly spread. So, um, I'm pretty religious about doing that. So what you kind of do is, you know, you degrease first and then I actually use a hairdryer to keep the metal up. I found that works better. Um, you know, you get it pretty hot and then, you know, you spread your bluing on there and I do, you know, I kind of try and spread it evenly. I don't worry about the 30 seconds to a minute, but obviously I don't keep it on there for like 10 minutes. But once I know it's like good and caked on there, um, then I obviously, you know, wash it off with the cold water and, um, then I go to my steel wool any kind of spotches on there, you know, you just kind of um, rub them in, um, just kind of remove any kind of excess, I guess. And then I go back and I degrease again and obviously wipe dry, all that, and repeat, um, hair dryer, um, bluing, wash off, stamp, or steel wool, uh, degrease, repeat. So, and you do that or at least I do that as many times until I, you know, feel like the color is good enough. So there's really not a set amount of, you know, coats that you're required to do. There's some people say, you know, oh, yeah, there is a point when you're like, okay, it's not going to get any darker, you can tell. Um, but there's no harm in, in trying at least, especially when it comes to the barrel and the receiver. So once I know like the super blue is not doing anymore, that's when I kind of switch over to the perma blue and I go from there. So yeah. Um, all right, well, I'm gonna go get set up in there and we'll just do the screws. The barrel and receiver we're gonna do outside since the sink that I have here isn't um, really big enough to, to do the whole thing. The one outside, I guess, I mean, it'll be a little bit more messy, so I'd rather do that outside. All righty, well, we are at my teeny tiny sink where we're gonna blue the screws, so. Uh, I guess one more thing I forgot to mention, yes, it is important that you obviously wear gloves for this part. Um, I've been stupid before and I've not worn gloves and that smell, if you've ever smelled bluing, it is not pleasant. I used to, I'm not in an apartment anymore, but my whole apartment would smell like it, so... It goes away after a while, but you know, when you're not using the blowing, just put the cap on because this stuff is not the best smelling stuff. So, um, okay, so we got all my little screws here that we're gonna blow. Now, I only sanded down the parts that you're actually gonna see, like the actual screw itself. I'm not worried about that. I'll just, you know, regularly clean that. But the parts that you are gonna see, you're gonna blue so um 
this cleaner degreaser, it goes quick. This is not originally what came in the bottle. I just ended up putting a lot of the, I forget what it is, but degreaser spray in here, then just a little bit of soap. And that's what I use. I just reuse the bottle after a while. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to film every part, but I'll just film the parts for the first coat and then just kind of show you every coat after that. So, um, the one thing is now I'm going to use a big towel to dry this off. Cause I've had just many towels that they just get so dang off after a while. You don't want to use them and you just got to keep throwing them in the dryer. So, all right, we'll just start with degreasing. <laughs> everything up and clean the swab before we start. Let's see, so we're gonna start with the super blue. So I'll start and just open that up. I put the swab in, close it off until I'm ready to actually start. And I don't know, I just, once you do this once in a while, you'll know kind of just how hot this stuff gets. So we'll see. I don't really have that big of a working area. But alrighty. Now, I know some people use an actual like patch of water. Um, I read that you don't want to actually just like throw it in like a, you know, a barrel of water and let it sit in there. You just want to wash the reaction off. It like stops the chemical reaction. I'm no scientist or whatever. I don't know really how this stuff works from a scientific standpoint, but this has seemed to work fine. Just having a sink wash it off um this is just like a plastic sink and it's got like a stainless steel drain and it doesn't harm it i'm really happy though that there is a chick-fil-a so close that has been my go-to recently it's crazy how busy this place is good All right, now with these smaller pieces, I found that you don't really need to steal wool. You don't really need to steal wool than like other pieces, like bigger pieces. I don't really see the, um, what do you want to call it? The imperfections or the color just, or the color uh, changes like these can have that little rainbow effect on them or whatever you call it once again i am not a scientist i don't know what the term is for it but like bigger pieces you'll see on the receiver you'll see the color differentials on those see this one there's still some blowing that's needed on the edges here so i think i'm gonna do two of the super blues and then two of the perma blues and all right, we're back outside. The screws that we just blued, we're gonna oil them up. Sorry, the lighting in here is not great. Um, I don't even know if I need to show you this part, but I probably be able to tell that these do get darker when you do them with oil. I'm using this stuff, whatever it is, Impro Seven Combat Proven Gun Oil. Um, this stuff works pretty good, so I just put them on a 
little patch. I'll oil them all down. And you can see it'll get rid of that, those little white patches from the excess gluing on there since we didn't steel wool. All I worry about or care about is the uh, parts that'll be showing. So you can see that came out a little darker. All right, that's all the parts rolled up. They look pretty good. All darkened up. Those will look good. Alrighty, we are outside ready to do the bluing on the barrel and the receiver. Uh, this is the coolest day it has been in quite a while here. Um, so perfect day to do it. Well, not perfect, but best that we'll get for a little bit. Um, so first process, kind of like the screws, um, everything else is we are going to degrease it. I have that degreaser that I've made. It's just got a little bit of soap and then actual degreaser spray in it. We're just gonna wipe this down and do it two or three times. That's what I like to do. I don't know if I'm gonna do eight coats on this, but we're gonna start with the super blue. We got enough in there. We'll start with the super blue. Let's start with four coats. We'll see how it looks. And then we'll switch over to the perma blue and see how dark that gets. And I've had to redo bluings before and restart and dump some of that water out of the bucket sorry uh, as i said you can redo the blooming if you need to but this time we're just going to do four super blues and then four perma blues and i've explained if you've just skipped to this part that the super blue seems to get everything spread on there first the perma blue sometimes don't spread too evenly so I start with the super blue and then finish everything with the perma blue. All right, so we're gonna try and heat this all up. This is probably gonna take a while, but. start with the receiver. Now I just want to get a first coat on there. I'm not too worried about if I get every single piece the first time around, but we just want to make sure we get At least most of it. Alright. Daryl. Seems to be looking good. I said I'm not worried about that part inside the where the site sits. It's the least of my worries because you're not going to see that part.
a little awkward, but it's okay. I'm trying to do everything at once. Probably didn't get everything, but that's okay. That white discoloration on there, that's just excess. It wipes off. And you'll see when we steel wool this, it comes off pretty easy. Alrighty. You can see all those spotches on there. That'll come off with the steel wool. It doesn't really do as much with the perma blue, but the super blue. You'll definitely see that more. Start at the back of the receiver. Just kind of lightly scrub that off. You should want to see an even coat on there. Don't worry, it's just the first coat, so, you know, it'll be a very light gray. It's not going to be the color you want first try. That's why you have to do all these coats. white spotchiness you can see now it's a little it's more evenly spread there's some parts I missed you can see inside there I don't know um, but we'll get that on this next coat and that's why you do all these coats but we degrease I don't do it three times I mean I do it like two or something Okay, coat two. All right, that should be good enough. Super blue. Oh, please, window. Blow that over. That would not be good. That's why I bought like three or four bottles of this stuff. And as I said, there's people that say, do not blue your entire gun, it won't last. But as I said, I've, the guns I've done, I'm not really planning on shooting too much or taking hunting or really being, you know, a beat up gun that I, always go to the range with and travel with. These are more just relic pieces to just say I have and also to resell. I've, I mean, that's my plan with most of these is to make some kind of money on them. Um, I have a gun broker that I sell them on. So far I've been pretty successful at making a profit on these. I know probably after buying all this stuff and the time put in, I mean, it's not, it's not really that much money, but you know, this is just more of a, a hobby for me. You know, everyone's got a, a hobby they enjoy. This is mine, or one of mine I really, really love doing. So if I can make a little money while doing it, sure, why not? I guess the, the one thing is I don't really want to become too personally attached to these, but it's hard not to when you put all this time into them. But that's why immediately when I'm done with them, I, I go and I list them up for sale. If they sell, just get it out of my sight. I, don't, do not want to become personally attached to it. But then again, that's why I'm buying the cheapest ones I can find. The most beat up ones. It was something super, super rare. Yeah, probably not gonna sell it or do what I'm doing right now. All right. Not as spotchy this time. See, it doesn't get that much darker once you put on the next coat, it's just marginally. So that's why I'm just maybe only gonna do four of the the super blue because I found, as I said, the perma blue somehow seems to give it a darker color. And that might be just because of the certain metal. I'm 
no chemists, as I said. What do we think? Looks pretty good. Grease, repeat. Two more coats of the super. Sometimes I'll forget how many I've done. But we're going on to the third. It's a little darker. Looks like it. Well, as I said, you don't know until you steal bullet. All right. Well, on to number four. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot again. Ah, wow, I almost forgot. Degrease. Okay, on to number four. And I said that we'll see how number... Wait, I'm going to do five of the super blue. I'm going to see if it gets any darker after from four to five. And if it does, we'll go to eight. If not, we'll just stay with five and switch to the perma blue. Number four, going on. Done. <sighs> Very tedious. Huh. Really not too much. Darker. Especially once we steal wool this thing. Again. Alrighty, let's see, what do we got? All right, degrease time, and we'll put one more of the super blue. Well, we'll see. If it gets any darker, we'll go to eight, but if not, we'll just stick with five, and then we'll switch to the perma. Um, all right, so, number five uh, for the super. Doesn't get any darker, we're calling quits and moving to the perma. Okay, number five. Mm. 
better. Well, we'll see. All right. We're forgetting steps now. I degrease again. Yep. Okay, probably time. Same prayer, this stuff. It's a darker. Well, so far, so good. Yeah, no, someone, if you've done this before and you know that what super blue is better for than perma. If I'm doing this wrong, I should just be doing this all perma blue. Please, help me out here. <laughs> and this is just the process I've done and it seems to work. <sighs> Definitely looks a little bit darker. Hooray. I think it looks darker. I'm gonna do a little bit of light steel wooling. Three more? Yeah. Yeah, that made a huge difference switching over. I love Top Gear. What's that guy? Or uh, Jeremy Clarkson, he says. Sometimes I honestly believe my genius generates gravity. Many applications, around six. We're putting on number seven? Yeah. Well, five supers, we're at one perma. So we're gonna do nine total. Three more? Yeah. Number two, the Perma. Number three, or two. <laughs> Gonna lose count again. Okay. Number two, the permadone. So what is that at? We're at seven applications down. No idea if the lighting's any good on this, but it's a little darker. So yeah, the next video will probably be, well, restoration video for that matter will be either for the Arasaka or the Karkana I'm getting, the Enfield. And what else did I get? Oh, the Steyr. Probably be the Steyr. Uh, wish that was drier. 
Move those over there for now. Yeah, that's better. Nope, stay still. Gotcha. Come on. All right, guys. Well, sorry about that. I was an idiot and I forgot to plug my phone in while I was recording the bluing process for the receiver and the barrel. So that cut off, um, I think, with about, what was it, one perma done. So I had two more coats that I did of that. Um, I've already oiled the barrel and the receiver. Um, it came out pretty good. Um, I don't know if it would get any darker, so I have not put it back together yet. That's, you can see everything's still apart and that's what we're going to do now is just put this back together, see how it looks. And if I like the way it looks, I'll leave it as B. If not, I, as I said, uh, rust bluing is the thing that I'm planning to do next with, uh, my other firearms. So, um, for now, we're just going to see how this looks, just putting it back together. Um, I think y'all remember early in the video, I lost that one piece that went under that washer. I still need to get that, but you know, it's not that big of a deal for now. It's not the major component, like a, a trigger spring or something. It's just for the rear sight, um, but we'll get that put on later. But for now, we'll just go ahead and put this all back together. So, oh, here's the stock I promised I'd show y'all um, earlier in the video. Um, what I did, and I think I said earlier, I would show y'all before and afters is, um, I mean, this thing was just destroyed. Well, not destroyed, but it was just disgusting. It was just pretty much black. Um, I started with the uh, stripper, wood stripper. Um, I let that sit on there for about two to three hours. And then I had just kind of a paint scraper thing. I just took and got the excess off and after that you know just kind of wipe it down and then uh went over and thoroughly degreased it um uh and kind of just steel wooled it at the same time and just kind of scrubbed in there with some soap and then i let that dry and then i started sanding it down i started with uh, 120 grain then 220 400 and then finished with 800 a lot of people say you don't need to um, finish it with 800, but, uh, I did. <laughs> um, and it's come out really smooth. Uh, there are still a lot of, you know, blemishes. I mean, not blemishes, what do you call them? Just marks on here that are still, um, you know, I was unable to get out, but, you know, with a gun that was as dirty and dark as it was before, I'm pretty happy with the way this came out. And then I finished it with, gosh, walnut, and then uh, a little bit of gun stock stain, kind of mix those two together. And I just put one coat on there. It always seems just to do the trick. And then um, some final protective coat. I forget the name of it. I just put on there and it came out really good. I really like the way it looked. I've already got some of the parts that I've glued installed, um, the stock disc, uh, one of the sling swivel pens. Um, yeah, one of the uh, sling swivel springs over here. Um, and then I guess, I don't know what you part you call that, just the, um, I guess it helps stabilize the receiver in there, this metal part. Um, so, uh, let's see, what do we want to start? I guess we'll just start. Um, why don't we just go ahead and put the butt plate on. Happy with what the butt plate came out. There is a little bit of a scratch right there, but I found the butt plate's obviously the part that's going to get worn out the most over time, obviously, because you're shouldering that, that part. All right. You know how good you can see that butt plate installed. We 
we'll do this sling swivel. Let's see, do we need to do anything else in the meantime? Mm, I think that's good. If I can remember what parts go to what. So I said there's a million. Should I just dump them out? Why not? It's hard to see in that box. in we got our what do you call this bolt takedown lever I guess that's good all right we'll work on the rear sight and that's the one piece I told y'all that I am missing so we'll just get on what we have for now doesn't slide that much around without this, but obviously we want to put this back in. Ooh, okay. What do we got next? Well, I guess it's time to put this in the stock. magazine spring in. Which way does that go? Just like that. Yep. That came out pretty good. Okay. What do we got next? I guess we will put upper hand guard piece on. We got our sling swivel. Swivels, I guess. are a little bit loose but now here comes the hard part getting this on and I know I'm gonna have to do some banging piece but I'm gonna oil her down before I do so and that is the receiver and the bolt Finished, restored, BZ33-12. That came out really, really, really good. I am very happy with that. It's not perfect, but it's about as good as this gun's gonna get. I do like to leave these final parts, I believe, just so oiled a little bit. So it gives it just a little bit of that darker look that we like. And there we have it, guys. It's 
all done. That turned out pretty good. Now I do need to get those uh, sight pieces put back in, but the piece is under the washer right now, so I'm gonna have to get that later. But I'll be posting my Instagram what the final pic pictures look like um, and do some more before and after. But yeah, I am very, very happy with the way this one turned out. If you stuck around for this whole video, I'd be surprised if you did, but I appreciate y'all. Make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't. <laughs> oh man. Very fun project. Um, we'll be getting in a few more guns next week. I have that Arasaka coming in this week. I'll be doing a, a video on that. I don't think I'm going to restore it, but at least I'll show y'all the gun itself. Um, then we got the Steyr M95 coming in, um, the Carcano, uh, 1891, I forget, the long Carcano, and then a, uh, number one Mark III Enfield, um, and so at least the Carcano, the Enfield, and the N95, we will be restoring those, um, so those will be fun projects, but in the meantime, this was the VZ33-12. Czechoslovakian, if I said that right, rifle made in 1937, uh, contract for El Salvador restoration project. Um, yeah, very fun. Surplus restorations. Um, I enjoyed this one very much. All right, I'll see y'all soon. Thanks.